Hey everyone, welcome to this video. This week I'm going to be telling you about how I found my first bug and give you some tips for business logic errors uh, in the meantime. So I hope you find this video useful. Um, well, before we start, let me just talk about our sponsor, which is Integrity. This video is very kindly sponsored by Integrity. Integrity is a really fast growing bug bounty platform. So a bug bounty platform means they have the targets, um, they allow you to report the bugs, and they're the ones that deal with things like payment. So they basically have a big long list with all the targets and you can just choose what you want to hack. Um, because they're so fast, they're growing so fast, there are so many opportunities. Um, new programs and scope changes happen all the time and there's always plenty of fresh and new things, things that people have not touched before, to hack. Uh, both with public and invite-only programs. I really love working with them because they're huge supporters of the Bug Bounty community, sponsoring not just my content but other creators too. Um, I know a lot of people have already signed up, some people have even found their first bug, um, I've seen pictures of people's Red Bull, I've also seen people participating in the XSS challenges and winning some swag, uh, and I'm really happy for everyone. If you want to sign up too, you can use my link on screen, that's go.integrity.com forward slash kt, it's on the screen, it's in the video description. Uh, let's talk about my first bug. So. This is tip zero, which is how I found my first bug. So I was very fortunate to be invited. I was not invited. I came across a listing, thanks to a friend of mine, um, for HackerOne asking for mentees uh, in some of the local London community groups for a life hacking event that was happening. And I was kind of, my friends were like, oh, you should go check it out. I think you'd really enjoy it. And I said, no, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Um, and then they kept on pestering me. I was like, okay, fine. Like, we'll do a little bit of a reunion. I was like, okay, whatever, sure, fine, 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 fine. I'll sign up. So I signed up. Um, and I went down to London for the day with the full expectation that I wasn't going to find anything. That this was going to be a fun time to see what hacking was like and maybe have some, like, more guidance on how to get into it or just better understand InfoSec in general. I totally remember being on a train going down there and thinking, I am not going to find a bug. Not at all. Um, and I was there and I, like, never touched bug before. I'd never done any kind of security stuff before. I was very much in the camp that security seems really hard and I quite like making websites. So I was in a position where I was like, no, 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 sounds hard, don't want to do it, no thank you. So when I was there, I, I did, we had like a short introduction how to use Burp. So I downloaded Burp and I set it up and the target was Uber. So I started looking around some of Uber stuff, not really expecting to find anything. Um, and when I was there, I noticed there was an API endpoint and it had a put request. Now, puts are kind of rare in web development because they're not actually implemented by the browser or they're not usually implemented by the browser properly. So it was quite rare to see a put request and that kind of, I don't know, it was the only endpoint that did have a put request as well. So I was like, oh, that's a bit, that's a bit weird. So I started testing it. Um, so I was, went to my mentor, oh, what should I do? He said, oh, why don't you just try removing the cookies? So we removed the cookies and it worked. It still worked, even though I wasn't logged in as anybody. Why did that? That shouldn't have worked. Um, and we realized it wasn't idle, but we couldn't find a way to generate the ID. So we spent a lot of time looking for ways to generate the ID. And when I was doing that, I was looking at, you know, how all of the little um, bits that came before that were then operating uh, and what, how you could generate this ID. And when I was testing it, I was putting in, you know, ludicrously high numbers. I was like, okay, $1,000 million. Um, and I realized when I would test these on the, uh, like, thing I was testing itself, it wouldn't accept them. But when I did it via the API, it would. It's like, okay. Uh, and I pointed this out, and he's like, why don't you make it negative? And I was like, okay, I'll make it negative. And it worked. And this was kind of a classic business logic error because even though without the ID, it would have been very difficult to exploit the um, the idol, it would not have been that difficult to exploit that business logic error in the same way. So we reported both and I got paid a thousand dollars and that was my very first bounty. I remember the feeling. Uh, I remember typing up the report, feeling very, very stressed and really excited, but also like internally screaming. Um, and yeah, that was my first bug uh, and it was amazing. It was fantastic. 
So I'm a big fan of business logic errors as first bugs because they're one of the only bugs that you can find just with manual testing. There's no automation, there's no clever thinking. You don't even have to know anything about security because I, I, I showed you that. Um, that it's really just a case of kind of understanding how you could break an application by just giving it like, the wrong input. So that was my first bug. Um, so my first tip for you, my t tip number one, is make numbers negative. If you see a negative, like a number, make it negative. Check if it's got it, especially on quantities. So here's a good way of thinking about it. So if you've got two items, one is one pound and one is two pounds. If you have minus two of the one pound item, that is minus two pounds. Now a minus number may not go through payment systems because they're not going to refund you the money, maybe. It might do, and that'd be a really cool bug. Um, but what it will do is give you a discount because it won't be smart enough to realize, oh, that's minus two of something. Um, so what you can do is you can also add something worth two pounds and they cancel each other out, right? Because you have negative two of item one, one of item two, and then you've got a total cost of zero. And that makes it free. And you can do this to get not necessarily item one for free because that may never show up because it will be seen as minus two it could totally show up because somewhere down the line it gets seen as it gets seen as two um but it may not get seen as um like minus m minus number but it's very unlikely that someone will catch the fact that it's then made number two or item two that was two pounds, then free. So you might still be able to get the item for free. And that's a really, really, really simple way of finding a business logic error, always worth testing for, like all the time, any e-commerce system, I always test for this. But sometimes it won't work. Now, sometimes it won't let you put in a negative quantity. It might let you put in a fractional quantity. So if something was two pounds and you get 1.5 of it, you can reduce that to one pound and it can still round up to one um, in the back end, right? Because you can't have 0.5 of an, an object. So that's a good way to kind of get stuff, kind of a good way to get that kind of initial business logic error. Um, very, very simple way. And I've actually written about this. Now, if you are a patron of mine, um, there is a great NCC white paper by Suresh Dali, which goes on all kinds of these e-commerce bugs, but the parameter manipula manipulation is what we're talking about, and especially currency manipulation. So one other suggestion is manipulating the currency. So it was pounds, you change it to rupees. 20 rupees is not the same as 20 pounds, but a payment system may allow it anyway for a, a transaction that was 20 pounds. And there's a few other ones in that. I really recommend um, this paper, which is the NCC white paper, if you're a Patreon, a patron, um, you actually get my kind of notes um, in the £10 tip. So actually you can go and see my actual physical notes that I write when I uh, read something. But it's all from the NCC white paper, so go read that. So the next step, I think, really to finding business logic errors is to walk through functionality. And that can be really helpful even to start writing this down. Um, one of my very first videos I made was actually on business logic errors. And quite a lot of those errors could have been found by even beginners if you just sat there and wrote down what changes at each stage. So one thing you might have is things like ordering something. So, or let's say buying something with points. Uh, you might start and you go, okay, does the user, uh, does this user logged on? Is the user on the right endpoint? Okay, great. Um, then you might get a decision. Does the user have enough points to complete this transaction? And when you start to map out what it looks like, so what does a failure look like and what does a pass look like and what endpoints does it hit? Um, that's a really important first stage to finding business logic errors because one of the easiest ways to find a business logic error is to just bypass things. So you can totally find a way that lets you bypass the whole decision. Like, do you have enough points in your account? Um, yes or no well i just went straight to the confirmation and it still worked and i was able to to buy something with my points and that's a real bug i found uh, again on on a uh, real system and that's a really really common business logic error so if you sit there and you like understand the inner workings especially if it's an app which has like a ton of things to get to a single stage um 
really really useful if it's like redeeming so checking if you have enough of something checking if you have enough points really useful if it's things like checking a step has been completed like payment so you know you can completely like uh bypass a payment step on some uh e-commerce systems um because it didn't do a check it's just like oh you've you finished done great it didn't check wait for that response so bypassing stage is one of the easiest ways to kind of find one of these bugs and especially you know making sure you you literally on a piece of paper write down like show the endpoints that's what i do i write all the endpoints and i like okay this endpoint does this and then this endpoint does that and then i look for ways i can break it another bug i've actually found is something that was actually working as intended so i was working on one application and it, it i didn't log on but i was able to kind of access some functionality of this application um, even though i wasn't logged on at all so although it wasn't necessarily like bad per se um it could actually let you still edit even though you weren't logged on even though you'd provided no verification that you would own this asset you were in control of this asset it would still work anyway even if you weren't logged in and sometimes you know that for them it was because they didn't want to have this authentication system uh but they absolutely should have because it was personal data it was not just personal data but personal data that could be changed um and it was personal data that could be changed really easily by just knowing public information about somebody like their email address and the developers intended that they intended to not require passwords and unfortunately this was not the right decision for the developers to have made and one thing you might notice is that sometimes working as intended can have an unintended security outcomes and with that one thing i really recommend is always consider the impact like always think you know what if i was an attacker what could i do with this and this advice kind of applies like much wider reaching than just business logic errors but especially thinking you know what can i do as an attacker um to kind of cause this what can i do as an attacker to like exploit this and sometimes it is just this is working how the developers wanted it to work but they just didn't consider the security impl implications of that and that's a huge problem so always be thinking impact even if you've not actually exploited anything um, so my next piece of advice here is that business logic errors are often this door to other vulnerabilities uh, things like idors cross-site scripting information disclosure request smuggling ssrfs um, authentication issues rces business logic kind of provides this kind of doorway so again don't just stop at like business logic don't just stop at the first bug see what else you can do with it like see how far you can push a bug and then report it because that's guaranteed not just to get you a bug but also to get you higher bounties you can get what would be a medium bug triage is like a high by just following kind of simple steps um my final piece of advice here well my second second to last piece of advice is authentication so authentication is particularly vulnerable to business logic errors classic example resetting passwords right there are so many ways that you can um like mess around with you know changing emails resetting passwords and then you can chain these vulnerabilities so a really classic example is a business logic error that means you don't ask well it's, it's kind of a violation of secure principles but i'm gonna call it business logic error because it's not in the business logic um so you reset a password but it uh, sorry reset someone's password but it doesn't require say an email check or you change the email or change some other details but it doesn't require the previous password you can change that with a um csrf so cross-site request forgery to be able to run that and because it doesn't ask for a password you can kind of automate it uh, from another url all you need to do is send like a poison link to somebody and then it will change their password to your new password now this is good this is good impact really nice impact we love it um but you can push this more you can actually then chain that with cross-site scripting to make it happen automatically so you put a cross-site scripting payload on a page maybe it's the home page which then activates the ss at uh, the csrf um which then kind of can automate the process of changing someone's password because the business logic error didn't require the original password in the first place 
And what you've got is someone visits the home page and their password gets changed. And that is like going from like a medium or low impact, like straight up there. Like like amazing chef's kiss Mwah. kind of impact from a single vulnerability. Um, but you're probably thinking from all of this, you know, but how do I learn this? How, what? Uh, and my advice is practice makes perfect. So uh, instead of sitting here and being like, oh, this is really great. I want you to practically kind of use these skills. I'm going to recommend the um, uh, Port Sugar's Web Vulnerability Academy, which is a free resource that you can learn about business logic vulnerabilities and how to exploit them. Um, and usually I'm not a big fan of CTFs, but I think it's good in this case to kind of get a feel for some of the bugs that we've talked about today, actually in more of a, more, more context. Um, because business logic errors, unlike other bugs, uh, are actually really wide reaching. So if you look at my first video on business logic uh, errors, you will see when I look about the exam talk about the examples, there are like so many different examples, like so many different impacts from this single vulnerability. So they're quite broad vulnerabilities because there's loads of different ways they can impact. Um, but I really recommend this for at least having a go. They also have some really good labs that combine it with SSRF. Um, really, really good. So. Right, and that is it. That is my 10 tips. Well, one was a story. So my nine plus plus one tips on how to find business logic errors in the wild. And then how can I hand that lead to mine? I really want to thank all of my patrons this, this week and in the next few videos um, who have been supporting me throughout my break, even though they totally didn't have to. Um, so I really, I really, really appreciate it. So I'm thanking everybody. Usually I only, only thank my top supporters, but this week and the next few weeks I really want to make sure that everybody knows how much I appreciate your support um, we have Forrest Held, El Hassin, um, Bo Graham, Josh, Colgario Joseph, Brett Haynes, Jackson N, Zero Byte, Andreas, the entire OWASP DevSlop team, uh, Chiridan Dand, Bangalore, Wardle Castles, Lan Lan, uh, Gainvale, James Clee, Shirley Singleton, Joshua Moore, Xander Mackey, and Kuna Kossi. Thank you very much for supporting my work on Patreon. I just, I don't realise how much it means to me, like me personally. And also, not only could this show and this whole YouTube channel really not become viable without my Patreons, it could not be possible without the amazing support of Integrity. And I just really want to thank them as well for sponsoring my content. I really don't take having an advertiser lightly on my channel. And I genuinely think they do good things for the community. Um, and it's made allowed me to make some really big investments in my channel and really improve, I think, the quality of my videos, um, as well as just making this like a viable thing to do in my free time. And what I really like about them, and probably one for me, one of the biggest things is that they are so active on social media. They interact with their community all the time. You can tell they really value their hackers because they're not, they're always giving away stuff. They're running kind of XSS challenges. And if you're not necessarily ready to find your first bug, those challenges can be a really great way um, because they're totally based on real vulnerability that people have found. So I think they do care about their community a lot. And that's why I really enjoy being supported by them. Um, so please do give them a lot of love uh, from my community to theirs. So their link is on screen. It's go.integrity.com forward slash Katie uh, in my description on screen now. I don't get any kickbacks from your bounties. It just lets them know that I sent you there. So thank you very much for watching. Um, it's been great to be back. I'm really looking forward. So keep on looking out for weekly videos. The next video I'm going to be doing is, I don't know, I'm kind of stuck. I might make two, um, not sure. It will either be uh, uh, account takeovers and house call account takeovers, or it's going to be the uh, idle cookie trick and how to actually get the cookie trick to work and, and why it works and stuff like that. So thank you everybody for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your week um, and I will see you all next week. Bye everyone.